starting promptly at seven, all about timing. Um, welcome. So folks who are just joining us now, uh, welcome to our meet and greets. And we're happy to have you here tonight. Um, thank you for making time, like I said, to listen to local candidates about their plans for climate action. As we know, real action on climate change and biodiversity loss has never been more important. And selecting candidates that prioritize a green and just society is absolutely what we need to be doing in this election. So that's why we're hosting these events. So you can learn a little bit more about these climate plans from the various candidates. Um, this event is being recorded. It's currently being live streamed and it's gonna be shared online after the event. And it's inspired and a part of the 100 Debates for the Environment, which is a series of events run by Green Pack. So tonight on our agenda uh, for London North Center, we're gonna be hearing from each candidate for five minutes about what their climate action plans are if elected, and then having a Q&A period with some questions from the audience. We only got through three last time, so it is uh, somewhat quick. Um, but if you do have questions, please submit them down in the Q&A section and Leah will be selecting and reading those uh, during the question and answer period. And also, if you'd like closed captions, please click the live transcript button at the bottom of the page as well. Uh, for anyone joining us, we would like to acknowledge that we are gathered uh, for this event on the traditional grounds of the Anishinaabeg, Haudenosaunee, and Lanapawak peoples. And we're actually upriver currently from Chippewa of the Thames First Nation, Oneida Nation of the Thames, and Muncie Delaware Nation. And we are hoping that whoever is elected makes truth and reconciliation a big priority and our organization commits to continuing working to make a community and a city that is resilient, vibrant, and just for all. So uh, starting off for London North Center, I will be going alphabetically by last name. And like I said, uh, candidates have five minutes to talk about their climate action plans. So first we are going to be passing it to Greta Frajskatos, liberal candidate for London North Center, and he'll be sharing his plans for climate action and environmental protections for five minutes. And then I'll be moving on to the next candidate and then at the very end to Q&A. So any questions, please make sure you put them in the Q&A uh, box. And otherwise I will pass it over to you, Peter. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for the invitation, Skylar. I really appreciate it. I hope everybody's well. I really want to thank especially the, uh, the London Environmental Network for their civic activism, particularly on issues of climate action. Uh, the government has acted, I think, in a very meaningful way over the past uh, five and a half years. And uh, that's in large part because of organizations like this that have pushed the government to act. I also wish the very best to, uh, to Ms. Prout, uh, to Ms. Hodge, who I see on screen. I hope this finds you well too. And of course, anybody who's uh, taking part tonight in terms of watching this discussion. Uh, we do have five minutes, as you said, Skyler, so I'm just going to go through some of the things that we have done and want to do. Uh, first of all, the federal liberal government took meaningful action to get to net zero emissions by 2050 by enshrining Canada's net zero goal into law. We've advanced, furthermore, a ban on single use plastics, and we are committed to eliminating plastic waste by 2030. In fact, we've already banned microbeads and toiletries. We've made sure pollution isn't free anywhere in Canada by putting a price on it. Through a rebate, money is returned to individuals, as we know, and families wherever the federal system applies, such as in Ontario, and that is in complete part due to uh, Mr. Ford's lack of intent, uh, action, willingness to do anything on the environment, and we can only imagine what that would mean if Aaron O'Toole is Prime Minister. We've committed to help Canadians improve the energy efficiency of their homes and reduce their energy bills by providing homeowners with up to $5,000 in grants to retrofit their their houses, and we'll move forward on a plan to make interest-free loans of up to $40,000 available for this purpose. Uh, to encourage electric car purchases, we made available rebates of up to $5,000 to 100,000 Canadians who have purchased electric vehicles already. Uh, we've also invested significantly in charging infrastructure. It means that you can drive an electric car from St. John's to Victoria. I know that Mr. Hamoud went over this as well, but it is a key point that needs to be emphasized. To bring it local, uh, in London, there are dozens of charging stations available throughout our city because of the federal liberal government's investment. And if, if re-elected, we will apply this rebate to used electric cars and continue to grow the network of charging infrastructure. We've committed to ensuring 100% of uh, vehicles sold in Canada be zero emissions by 2035 and supporting automakers and auto workers to produce in Canada. We have invested $25 billion in transit, in public transit. In London, more than $200 million has gone towards improving our transit system. Again, this is not theoretical. Everything that I've gone through here up to this point is things that we have done and if reelected, will continue in this vein. 
Also regarding public transit, we will help cities electrify their transit fleets. And locally, in fact, this conversation has begun with Mayor Holder and the LTC. Uh, I've been very happy to, to lead those discussions and want to continue uh, doing so. We've invested in cycling infrastructure. I know this is something that's very important to uh, this organization and the cycling, the new cycling infrastructure that you've seen in the city uh, really is reflective of a partnership between the federal government and the municipality here in London. We exceeded Canada's goal of uh, protecting 10% of our oceans by 2020, going from less than 1% when we took office in 2015 after the Harper years to just under 14% in 2020. We made the largest investment in nature conservation in Canada's history, $1.3 billion towards that in budget 2018, $3.3 billion towards it in budget 2021. This will allow us to reach our goal of protecting 25% of our lands and waters by 2025. Uh, we've done so in partnership with Indigenous peoples and leadership. We funded the Indigenous Leadership in Nature, nature Conservation Program. This includes the Indigenous Protected and Conservation Areas uh, initiative, and that's established the Indigenous Guardians Program, which supports Indigenous people's connection with traditional lands, waters, and ice. We launched the $8 billion Net Zero Accelerator Fund to decarbonize heavy industry like steel and, and aluminum. That's having tremendously positive effects already. We cut taxes in half for businesses that manufacture zero emissions products. We've invested $3.4 billion towards disaster mitigation. A great local example is the West London Dyke, really important for our downtown and as we continue to grapple with the effects of climate change. If re-elected, just to end here, we will continue the work that we've done. As I said, uh, all of this will absolutely um, continue. We are committed to it and it represents the most substantive progress that a federal government has ever made on the issue of climate change. Furthermore, fossil fuel subsidies will be ended by 2023. We will implement the recently passed Net Zero Emissions Accountability Act and advance new measures to achieve an ambitious 40 to 45 percent reduction in emissions by 2030 compared to 2005 levels. And we will launch to end things off a clean job, a clean jobs training center to help industrial skill and trade workers across sectors to upgrade or gain new skills to be on the leading edge of zero carbon industry. It's an approach that takes climate change really not just seriously, it puts that at the core of everything that we do. It's, uh, it's been endorsed across the spectrum. The former leader of the BC Green Party and the, the noted climate scientist, Andrew Weaver, has given it full praise. Uh, um, basically, um, I think it's eight out of 10. I think he was rating the different plans out of 10. He gave it an eight out of 10. Tom Mulcair, the former leader of the NDP, of course, has endorsed this plan and not the NDP's plan. And uh, finally, noted climate scientists and researchers like Mike, Mark Jackard have really gotten behind this plan and said that it is serious, meaningful, and based on research. So we want to continue in this vein. And thank you very much for the opportunity to present tonight. Thank you very much for attending and also sharing those plans and what you guys have done historically, Peter. I will now be handing it off to Marianne Hodge, who is the candidate for the Green Party in London North Centre. Thank you very much, Skylar, and thank you for everyone for being here uh, tonight and taking some time to hear everyone's uh, viewpoints. And uh, thanks to the London Environment Network for hosting this important discussion, because the Green Party does believe that climate change is the issue in this election. Extreme weather in other parts of the world can be easy to ignore, but now it's getting personal in Canada. My family has a cabin in Northwestern Ontario and for the second year in a row, the town was evacuated for forest fires. Families were concerned about the damage to their children's lungs due to the poor air quality. And longtime residents were now thinking they needed to invest in a camper so they wouldn't be risk being homeless next year. This is happening right here in Ontario. The Green Party wants a future that is full of prosperity, not fear. Enough is enough and it is time to do things differently. And even though the Liberals talk about all of the uh, wonderful things that they've done, we know that uh, we are too late to the game and we have a lot of catching up to do. The Green Party of Canada has been talking about climate change for decades and we have solutions. We can succeed with the technology that has already been developed. These sol solutions aren't sexy, they don't have a lot of flash or create millions of dollars for multinational corporations, but they do work. 
First, the cheapest form of energy is the energy you don't waste. We can save up to 50% of energy usage just by increasing the energy efficiency of our buildings, our vehicles, and our businesses. Saving energy means saving money, which is smart for consumers and business, and it even makes operating social housing more affordable. And we need more incentives. $5,000 for doing home renovations is just the tip of the iceberg. The second is to invest government spending in green job creation. The Environmental Defense recently reported that the current federal government gave the oil and gas industry $18 billion in financial benefits in 2020, including buying a pipeline, essentially making it cheaper to pollute. If instead they provided more incentives for Canadians to retrofit their homes and businesses to make them more efficient, those savings would multiply for decades to come and create a demand for well-paying construction jobs. Building standards should ensure new housing is built to be more energy efficient and make installation of solar hot water systems mandatory. No new oil and gas developments means existing workers will still have jobs in existing sites, plus the work to decommission the thousands of oil wells that are already abandoned. As people retire, they will not be replaced. Instead, there will be jobs in the clean energy industry, such as drilling geothermal wells. And third, there is a lack of supply of affordable housing. Shelter is one of our basic needs. And until we feel a sense of security, we have no ability to think about issues like climate change. If we look around the world for solutions, Finland is a great example. For every new housing development, at least 25% of housing must be affordable social housing. This has kept the supply of affordable housing to a reasonable level and has allowed them to nearly eradicate homelessness. Social housing is facilitated through incentives to developers and it takes all levels of government to help finance these projects. The Green Party supports funding only those projects that meet energy efficiency standards. And fourth, green technology has been called the greatest business opportunity of the century. Canada can become a clean energy leader. We need to diversify our economy. We border on three oceans and absorb lots of sun and wind. We have a talented tech sector. We have all the ingredients necessary to win. And lastly, Canada has been blessed with an abundance of natural beauty. Here in Southwestern Ontario, we live in the richness of the Carolinian zone. I've seen personally how this richness is diminishing in my work with Camp Kimo Key, which has lost 50% of its biodiversity in just 30 years. Part of any climate plan must be policies to protect these natural areas, not just to protect wildlife or as carbon sinks, but for our own well being. Being in nature is shown to improve our mental health. We have witnessed during the COVID 19 pandemic the great healing power of nature and the need to have access to nature and and parks. And most of all, we need government to be a leader, to show the path through regulation and incentives and to tie these incentives to climate policy, to encourage denser cities, to invest in national infrastructure, like an upgraded electricity grid, improved rail transportation, and affordable high-speed internet. The Green Party of Canada won't sacrifice their children's future health for corporate profits. Where money flows, grows. The question you need to ask is, what do you want to see grow? Thank you very much, Marianne. And you ended right on time. So I really appreciate that. Um, that was Marianne Hodge from the Green Party. And now I'll be turning over to Dirk Prout, who is the NDP candidate. Hi, thank you very much uh, to the London Environmental Network for hosting this important event and also for all the attendees um, for uh, attending and, and um, putting forward your questions, which we'll be happy to answer. So my name is Dirka Prout, I'm representing the NDP, and I wish to serve my community by implementing solutions to the housing crisis, inequality, and of course, climate change to build a Canada in which everyone can thrive. My vision for London um, for a just recovery in 
from the pandemic also includes sustainable ways of living and working that preserves the planet for future generations of all living beings. And in fact, I am also motivated to share my skills as an engineer because um, the housing crisis and the climate crises, um, these two crises need um, technological people who have some technological background. And that is something that is lacking in our parliament uh, today. So I would like to s share my skills and, and put them into the service of uh, climate change. The next four years will be really important for preventing the most devastating effects of climate change and for beginning our journey towards net zero. And this is especially true considering that the liberal and conservative governments thus far have failed to treat the climate crises as the emergency that it is. In fact, despite the liberals promising net zero by 2050, under Trudeau emissions have continued to rise each and every year and new pipelines have continued to be built and big oil has continued to also receive subsidies for using taxpayer money and the contrast between them and us is that we at the NDP are committed to holding our country and government accountable to doing our part in preventing this global crisis and reaching um, net zero emissions by 2050. To do this, we plan on ensuring emissions are reduced at least 50% by 2005 levels, from 2005 levels by 2030, and working with our partners to establish a multi-year national and sectoral carbon budgets and creating a climate accountability office and that office will uh, provide independent oversight of federal climate progress to engage the public and to make recommendations on how to achieve our goals. It's important that we support workers in a just transition. Unlike the Liberal government, the NDP is working towards net zero and protecting our air, land and waters while ensuring that our workers are supported in line with the rights of Indigenous communities to self-determination, free, prior and informed consent. Um, the recommendations and course actions from the Truth and Reconciliation Commissions and the United Nations De uh, Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. New Democrats know that skilled workers, construction trades or what have you will be needed to build a low carbon economy and we want an industrial strategy that is geared towards that goal. We will put uh, those workers front and center of our climate action plan and fight for workers and their communities to make sure that that no one is left behind. We are committed to ensuring that marginalized communities most impacted by climate change will benefit the most from job creation and community building benefits of those investments. And we want to make sure that workers don't pay for climate change, providing dedicated employment support, combining access to EI benefits, retraining and job placement services, and making sure that companies retain and redeploy their workers when in transition and ensuring that workers nearing retirement have the retirement security that they have worked for their entire lives so that they don't get penalized um, by uh, not having their pensions should they decide to retire early. New Democrats will put Indigenous peoples at the forefront of our efforts in striving towards net zero and ensure that First Nations, Inuit and uh, Métis leadership have a seat at the highest levels of decision making, upholding rec reconciliation and re respecting their inherent sovereignty. Climate change is the most important issue of our time and it's absolutely vital that we do our part. It, we owe it to our youth and we owe it to future generations. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Durka, for uh, ending those five minute climate action uh, plans and sharing what the NDP and you would plan to do if elected. Now I will be turning it over to Leah, who's going to be taking some questions from the Q&A box. Um, and I will remind folks, we are trying to stick to like a one minute answer. So it's going to be snappy, another snappy time with the London Environmental Network. Thanks, Skylar. Um, so we got this question, um, actually a few different variations of, of the same kind of question. Um, this one I'm going to read is from Marianne Larson. Um, it asks, Canada has committed through the G7 and G20 to end fossil fuel subsidies. What are your party's policies to end all fossil fuel subsidies and all new fossil fuel development permits and on what time frame? 
So we'll start, uh, we'll start with Peter and then we'll do one minute um, each. Thank you very much for the question. As I said earlier, uh, if re-elected, a federal liberal government would end fossil fuel subsidies by 2023. I want to emphasize something else, though, uh, just to uh, to be absolutely uh, uh, clear on it, and and so that we're on the same page and um, and, and working with accurate uh, points here. Uh, the fact is, is that where fossil fuel subsidies have been put forward by the government, uh, they have been in support of the oil sector. It's true, but if you look at how they were uh, put forward exactly, it was to help to clean up derelict oil wells, for instance, especially during the pandemic. That counts as a fossil fuel subsidy, um, according to the letter of the law, so to speak. But um, we had no other choice. We had to help oil workers during the pandemic. Clearly, the decline in economic demand meant that their livelihood was at stake. They have families to support. Uh, they lost their income. And we thought creatively, uh, in terms of uh, responding to a real need and, uh, and contributed in that way. And that work is ongoing. In fact, when I hear uh, Ms. Hodge and I, when I hear Ms. Pro um, and their ideas, which are, you know, I won't agree with everything, but a lot of what they said is reasonable. And the Liberal government is working on many of those ideas already articulated. In fact, the reviews of the NDP platform that have been put forward uh, make quite clear that the work that uh, the Liberal government is doing uh, is, uh, is in line with what the NDP is calling for, except that the Liberal Party platform is costed and that the NDP platform is not costed. Uh, and again, we've received uh, real praise from leading climatologists on this issue of subsidies. Yes, we have uh, committed by 2023 uh, to bring that to an end, but I think you well, uh, I think you can understand why we've uh, why we've persisted in in helping the oil sector is about helping workers during very difficult times. Thanks, and let's go in order that we did before, so we can go Marianne and then Durka. Oh, sorry, Marianne, you're muted. Sorry about that. As uh, Peter was uh, suggesting that um, the Liberals have done some work on trying to um, cap the oil wells that have been abandoned, uh, but the bottom line comes down to philosophy of um, what people think is truly a climate emergency. And in an emergency, you would not be buying new pipelines and you would not be fracking. And these things, new developments need to stop immediately. And so the Green Party would be uh, working to um, stop all new um, um, subsidies. And as well, uh, we would be working with the provinces to ensure that there are no new coal fire electrical generation plants. And uh, we know that right now coal um, is, is certainly an issue in the West. Um, so, here in Ontario, we uh, we think that uh, coal is uh, not a Canadian issue anymore, but it certainly is. And um, in terms of uh, some of the incentives that are going forward, that in terms of benefiting the oil and gas industry, it's also about providing capital. And as I said before, action goes where money flows. So if uh, we need to see uh, in, at least an equal amount of subsidies going to the clean energy sector as there are to the fossil fuel subsidies, because we need to have a, a future in clean energy that um, equals uh, the investment that we have in oil and gas. So uh, we would certainly be uh, looking to end those fossil fuel subsidies immediately and moving to uh, encouraging clean energy innovation. Thanks, Andrika. Sure, thank you. Um, the Liberal Party has bought a pipeline. Um, that is not in keeping with a climate fighter. It also has uh, a greenhouse gas lure 
lowering emission by 40 to 45 percent, whereas the NDP is promoting at least 50 percent. Um, the parliamentary budget officer has said that the TMX is only profitable if you do nothing to fight climate change, which means it's uh, profitable, but it's not doing anything to really help us to get to our net zero goals. Um, in addition, $188 billion have been provided, uh, or $18 billion, sorry, have been provided in support to the oil and gas industry. Yes, but only $15 billion over 10 years by the Liberal government has been provided for, um, you know, doing restorative work. We would immediately stop uh, building the uh, TMX pipeline. We will uh, prefer to invest in energy storage for renewables and invest in clean energies uh, and projects that promote climate resilience. We see the city of London declared a climate emergency in 2019 in April and a lot of municipalities need to upgrade their infrastructure in order to uh, be resilient against storms that are becoming more frequent, higher in intensity, but shorter in duration. Um, we certainly want to invest in transit and we will pair that with training of workers uh, and retraining of energy workers so that they could participate in a new green economy. I don't need to be told that our plan is costed. The Liberals may have a costed plan, but over the six years that they have been in power, their emissions have increased steadily. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and we have one more question, um, or time for one more question. Um, and I'm just going to find it here. Um, so it is um, from anonymous attendee. Electoral reform is a key change in the Canadian political system in order to get marginalized voices at the table on climate action and root cause issues of wages and housing. What is your party pledging to do in order to change our first past the post system? So please keep it to one minute or less, ideally. Uh, we don't want to run out of time and we want to make sure everyone has a chance. So let's start with Peter, Marianne, and Durga. Sure, thank you for that question. Uh, we are not intending to put back the issue of electoral reform to Canadians because we did not receive a, a clear consensus around an alternative to first past the post when the public consultations were carried out. A few years ago, I helped to organize large meetings here in London and there was no clear consensus to first pass the post. Uh, there, yes, is many. there are many people who want proportional representation, but even there, there's questions, even within the NDP caucus, by the way, about what type of PR would be most appropriate. On this issue of pipelines, with the 30 seconds that I have left, you'll, you'll permit me, Lee, I, um, I just have to make clear that uh, when the Liberal government decided to yes buy a pipeline, uh, that's not a new pipeline. It's a, the twinning of an existing pipeline to secure energy jobs in the thousands. These are working people that we wanted to help. Oil does remain the lifeblood of the modern economy. If it's not pipelines, it goes on to trains, uh, much more dangerous. And if it is the NDP federal position that they wish to end the, uh, the construction of the TMX pipeline, they really need to run that through the, uh, through the NDP of Alberta. Uh, and Ms. Notley, who is behind the pipeline, urged the federal government to um, to get involved and every uh, every cent in terms of a royalty that is obtained by the federal government or the tmx pipeline is put towards renewables uh, entirely it goes towards green energy uh, projects and other investments so um, i think Sorry, we have, Peter, to, have, have to have a pragmatic to approach that. Okay, just to keep things going, um, the Green Party uh, doesn't think that it takes a majority government to get things done. Instead, um, we believe that today's problems are complex and require collaboration. If debate was used to fight the right, to find the right solution instead of criticizing the other parties, every party would be invested in ensuring solutions work. We don't need governments who only really want to work in majority situations who seek ultimate power. We need governments who can collaborate and build strong teams. The Green Party supports the creation of a national citizens assembly 
who would be charged with learning about different forms of government from industry leaders and to suggest to Canadians a system that would allow everyone's voice to be heard and everyone's voice to count. Political systems are complex and require education campaigns to explain the benefits before consulting with um, Canadians. Thank you. Thanks, and Durka, would you like to wrap us up here? Sure. As a child, I was uh, proud to go with my grandparents to the voting booth. And it's very disconcerting to hear longtime voters so upset that this unnecessary election has been called that they are refusing to vote. vote. And I think that is a, a great loss for our democracy. Every voice needs to count. We need the voices of working class people, women, um, people with a lived experience of disability and so forth. Um, what we found is that electoral reform provides uh, more stable governments, governments that are more interested in peace as opposed to war, um, governments that are interested in forwarding social advancements as opposed to austerity, um, governments that are interested in people and the planet. So I think electoral reform is something that we need and the NDP is firmly behind it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for wrapping that up for us, Durka. Um, we are going to be ending our London North Centre meet and greet. And thank you so, so much for um, Peter, Marianne and Durka for all joining us. I do want to say we did invite all candidates from the major parties um, and we're so glad to have had you guys here. Oop, there's my timer um, to share about your platforms on climate action and other environmental issues. So uh, to all the attendees, thank you for coming and don't forget to vote in the advanced polls this weekend or on September 20th on election day and make sure that you cast a vote for the environment.